order to take a quick look at the print process on my R3000, I want to show you how I set up my image first before I go to print, and then I'll show you that. Okay, so I have an image that's 10 by 10, and this image is going to be printed on a carrier sheet that's 13 by 19. So I am going to put the image on the surface where I want it on the carrier sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is set it all up, print on a sheet that is either like the carrier sheet or is the carrier sheet without the um, surface that I prepared. And then I will know as I start to print, I'll print about five lines or so, and I'll know exactly where I should put that surface. So here I'm going to go up and I'm going to go to File Print, or you can do Command or Control P. It's going to open up my print box. I already have it set for the R3000. I have it set in portrait mode, which is great. I am going to use Photoshop to manage my colors, which I always do. You don't ever want to use printer manages colors. And then I'm going to use double-sided matte paper because I'm going to use a Type 2 uh, clear gloss from InkAid, and that is going to be the uh, matte, the printer profile for that because I know I've tested it a million times and it works fine. So then I'm going to go to print settings because I need to change some things. Um, right here, I need to go 13 by 19. Let's see if I have one in here. I do in my custom paper sizes. Then I'm going to go to printer settings and I'm going to print front poster board. Although I'm not printing front poster board, the printer is going to think I'm printing front poster board. I'm going to use double-sided matte paper and then I'm going to go back to print settings and go to advanced media control and I'm going to print um, wide with my platen gap because a standard will keep it thinner to the, uh, it won't give me as much width between the print head and the print and I usually print my stuff pretty much at the thickest. So here's where we figure out what's going to happen. This is going to be moved up a little teeny bit about, whoops, mess that up a little. Okay, that looks like about right. So what's going to happen here is I am going to hit print and I have already got a sheet of paper in the front of the printer so that I can mark my print where it's going to go. Then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to hit print again and I'm going to show you what happens when it prints. So here's going to go my first print so then I can line my print up with the paper. So let's see what happens first. First of all, if you can read this, it says platen gap is set to wide. If you don't know how to do that, you have to do it through your control panel here. You already have it set in the print box. So this OK takes you to a, a menu. And I'm going to hope I can find this correctly. I mean, well, let me just go back through all these. It's loading thick media. It tells you instructions for stuff. Loading CD, DVD, loading roll paper, which I don't use. And then these are the settings to maintain the printer, which will give you maintenance, printer setup, different things. So I'm, whoops, messed that one up, didn't I? I'm going for printer setup just so that you see that the platen gap is on this list. And I can set my platen gap to wide or standard. It's already at wide, so I'm going to go back now and go to my main panel. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this right here so that I can load the media from the front. And this is going to be poster board. So now I have a sheet of paper and here is the beginning print of my image. Now this was probably not a good test sheet and this may have some problems because this is a very thin piece of inkjet paper and I didn't put it on a carrier sheet that was thicker. And the reason I didn't is because I almost wanted to have problems so you could see what happens if you do. So I've got my poster board there and I am going to load this first. And it is not done really well. Let me tell you, the carrier sheet is not done well. And I said I kind of wanted to have some problems with it maybe so that you could see what happens. Like this is sticking up. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. 
and it says, feeding the media, please wait. Since I have a thinner sheet here, I'm going to hold on to this a little bit to hope it doesn't get askew if I really wanted it to print, but in some ways right now, it might be better if it doesn't. Okay, it's going to feed the media backwards, and then it's going to come out the front, or it's going to tell me it's a skew and it won't take it. And see, it says paper skew. Push to close, manual tray to eject, then reload paper. Can you hear that crunching array? Okay, now I have another one set up that might not be in the exact place for the, but it, it's on a better sheet of paper. So I'm going to do this again. And then there's one other thing that I'm going to do because we want this to work this time. The other thing that we're going to, I'm going to do, aside from heavy paper, is I'm going to actually hold it on the back side because what happens sometimes is when it comes out of here, it flips down or something and it doesn't like it. So I'm going to press OK and wait for this to take it. And, and mostly I'm doing this because it's an alternative surface and it's not just a flat sheet of poster board that would be just wonderful to go through here. I have to wait till it takes it. And then I'm just going to hold this back up a little bit. And it's going through its thing. And now it says, open the output tray and push to close manual feed tray, which is my hint that it is ready to print. So I push this in and I pull, well, this is already pulled out. And then I get to hit print on the printer and it prints. And now you have the finished print. I took the actual tape off of it, but here it is. I matched it up went through great and it's done.